And when I think of GMOs, and, and maybe this is not accurate, but I think of two different kinds. One is the plant being genetically altered to grow better or, you know, to withstand heat, cold, whatever. And then the other side that's it's genetically altered to be Roundup Ready, which you get a lot of pesticides sprayed in there. Talk about the first one. And these have been around for a quarter century or so, give or take. Do we know anything about the health impacts? I mean, is there information out there that says what these may or may not be doing to us? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay within what I know and, uh, and then with what I understand from the scientists that I've interviewed. So you're, you're right on the money to talk about GMOs in sort of two large categories. One are genetically engineered plants that are built to withstand drought or withstand floods or withstand um, uh, you know, salty soil or to add nutrition, whether you're talking about golden rice, for example, or um, cassava uh, that is grown to have beta carotene. And these, these are very, in, in the scale of things, they're very small niche plants that are being grown to support populations that may be malnourished or small farmers that may need support in a time of climate change or drought or flooding, that sort of thing. That is a really interesting category of research that a lot of very skilled, often publicly funded researchers are working on. That's one kind of GMO. The other kind of GMO are the ones that are being created at very large scale on hundreds of millions of acres of monoculture crops in the United States primarily and now increasingly in South America in places like Paraguay and Argentina. Those crops, mainly corn and soybeans, are being grown to fuel this industrial system that we're talking about. That is low nutrition, high calorie food, which is to say bad for human health because these are things that make people fat and don't give them the nutrition they need. They're also bad environmentally because they're requiring, in South America, the cutting down of rainforests to grow them. Um, in, you know, in the United States, we've eliminated prairies and all kinds of things to plant monoculture corn and soybeans. So for my money, the, the question is really macro, not micro. It's to think about what, what kinds of foods are we creating and then what kinds of foods are we not creating. And so when we go in full bore with all these GMOs, we are not planting 200 million acres of other things that might be higher nutrition or lower impact environmentally. So. You can ask other people to speak about, uh, you know, the, the micronutrients of eating a GMO corn plant versus a non-GMO corn plant. You can ask people about whether they yield more or less. As I understand it, there's been this mythology that, that GMO crops yield more than non-GMO. I'm not sure that's true. I think the evidence is, is out on that. I think um, the question about whether GMO plants are more nutritious or less nutritious, I think the evidence is coming in that they're, they're certainly not more nutritious. We know that they are used to make very high calorie uh, uh, foods. The other thing that's worth mentioning is that because public, public money for research has dried up so dramatically over the last 30 years, that researchers, in order to get grants to do their work, are now re relying on industry to finance research. So what is industry interested in? Industry is not interested in finding out whether GMOs are bad for us. Industry is, is interested in trying to scale them up because they're very profitable parts of their business model. So when you have the pure science being funded by industry as opposed to independent university research, you're going to get the outcomes that you pay for. So, you know, the, the, the kind of research that's being done has been very skewed towards the private sector and away from the public sector, which has all kinds of consequences. So, again, the question about whether some, this is safer than that is really just one part of a much larger conversation. Mm -hmm.